In this tutorial, the purpose of the color correction is to establish an editorialized or preferred color response. Here we see the sample file called architecture.pdf in the waiting jobs queue. Double-click on the file name to open its job properties. The document first appears in the fast preview window as two up single pages, starting at the front cover panel. Click the page-wise sheet-wise icon to preview the document as booklet reader spreads. Notice the image that crosses over pages 2 to 3. This is where our color correction will take place. Click on the Adjust Image tab. When page 2 first appears, it is displayed on its side. Expand the collapsed Selected 2 of 12 menu to make an additional selection of page 3 so that the two halves of the crossover image can be color corrected as one. Now zoom in on page 3 for a better look at its color. After rotating the page display into a more convenient upright orientation, closer inspection provides a sense that the flesh tone colors appear a bit too warm and reddish. Turning off the cyan and black display channels and viewing only the magenta and yellow components of the red family serves to support our impression of red overabundance. Using the eyedropper tool, locate a typical area of red overabundance and note its CMYK recipe. Using the Add Points button will produce a set of CMYK correction curves with anchor points automatically positioned at the precise color values under the eyedropper tool's cursor. Cyan 31, Magenta 70, Yellow 55, Black K19. Forming our primary color correction strategy, we determined to work directly on the magenta and yellow components of the red family. For the sake of clarity and flexibility later, we choose to delete the cyan and black anchor points from the curves up front using the trash can icon. In the beginning, it is normal for one to be unsure of exactly how much color needs to be taken away in order to satisfy the need. Here, we will simply drive a stake in the ground and evaluate the outcome as the correction progresses. We reduce the magenta 5 points, thereby changing input magenta 70 to output magenta 65. We are provided visual feedback in real time as the screen display color shifts with the repositioning of the curve. We are provided numerical confirmation in the input-output fields at the top of the curve interface and in the eyedropper tool menu. Clicking on the input icon in the lower right corner of the curve's interface allows us to combine together, as a group, color channels with already placed anchor points, in this case yellow and magenta, to affect a single relational lightness move. Pulling downward on the input slider bar then makes it easy to remove a little more magenta together with a smaller, related amount of yellow. We use the colorful real-time image display at the left to gauge the amplitude of the change as we make it. Once we establish a fundamental change that we like, our job as a color professional is to determine if our change spills over into other areas of color that needed to remain unaffected. First, we check to see if we have upset the natural neutral color balance in the highlights. We can see we have because the numbers show that magenta 30 changed to magenta 23 and yellow 24 changed to yellow 22. Fortunately, PrismaSync makes this very easy to fix. With the eyedropper tool already positioned in the highlight area, once again we use the Add Points tool. New anchor points are added to the curves, just as before, at the densities under the cursor. Again, we can quickly and easily delete the unnecessary anchor points from the cyan and black channels and focus our attention on the magenta and the yellow. First magenta. Highlighting the magenta channel and activating the magenta anchor point, we simply enter the number 30 in the output field, re-establishing that 30 input remains 30 output. Performing the same steps on the yellow color separation channel, we ensure that 24 yellow as input remains 24 yellow as output. Thus, we have localized our curve correction to keep the highlight colors unaffected by our flesh tone correction. Continuing to localize our color change, we determine that the blue field at the bottom of page 3 is a common design element that needs to remain consistent. Checking its color values, we learn that it, too, has been affected by our skin tone correction and needs to be fixed. 
Using the same techniques as before, we add a point on the magenta curve so that magenta input 43 can be returned from its altered value of 40 back to its start value of 43. Examining the curve's interface carefully reveals the appearance of a true professional level color correction. Curves that are smooth and localized, with some anchor points that protect colors and other anchor points that change. One last tour around the image ensures that we have not created any unacceptable inconsistencies. This final examination shows that corporate logo colors have been kept consistent and the neutral highlight color balance has remained unchanged. The before and after examination of the skin tone correction when checked looks subtle and appealing. Remember this though, screen display color, unless very carefully managed, should only be used as a basic guide and not for determining exact color matching. It is intended more for tracking change relationships as they are made. However, combining screen display color with before and after numeric output values, as done by PrismaSync, can be very effective, as we have just seen, at teaching, learning, and executing. But lastly, and most important, final color judgment should always be made on the printed sheet, which, in PrismaSync, can be easily generated using the proof feature. For more information about Canon's full line of production solutions, please go to www.usa.canon.com or contact your local Canon authorized dealer.